A lot of the examples we've shown of rigging with art have been very sort of cartoony and stretchy. And it's true that art is very good at those kinds of rigs. But you can also use it for very realistic rigging. Here, for example, I have rigged up a shoulder and arm to have some very nice sort of pseudo muscle deformation going on in here. Let's look, look around at this at the back. And you can see that you can actually see the um, musculature reacting a bit to how I'm moving the uh, shoulder around in a you know sort of semi-realistic way. Not as realistic as true simulation, of course, but much easier to set up. What's actually going on here is that I have a whole bunch of art chains that are being anchored with our art constraint. And this gives us a lot of flexibility and also a lot of ease of setup. So you can sort of see how they are stretching to attach to specific anchor points. These anchor points, because they are not set by the mesh, but by the art constraint, are both very easy to set up. All I really had to do was sort of draw these uh, bones in and sort of constrain up the uh, you know beginnings and ends of them. Um, and also uh, very useful for getting sort of nice proper sort of spread of deformation. For instance, if I rotate the shoulder, you both get the nice volume preservation that you always get out of art. But you can also see that because the points of uh, attachment, because they are using the art constraint, are being moved around with the deformer, it responds quite appropriately to the arm. You can see how the, the pectorals respond I didn't have to think about which bone or what part of the surface I was attaching it to to get that behavior. That just sort of fell nicely out of the art constraint. We even have some bone CVs being used here to produce some muscle bulge. If I push it out there, I've got a driven key sort of using the spline to create a bit of muscle bulge there. Another way to get really specific control over deformation is art's built-in post space deformer. So for instance, uh, if I rotate this arm, um, for default rotation this is pretty good, but you know, it doesn't quite look as good as one might like. Um, I can go over here and set up a post space deformer on this mesh and use it to control uh, how the mesh behaves when the arm bends. So I'm going to create a, po a new pose space. Um, and I'm going to add to it this art joint. Now, you actually can add any combination of attributes. It does true sparse interpolation. But in our case, we're just going to use this art joint. And what that actually means is we're using the tangent at this point along the art curve to drive the deformation. It starts by making a base pose, which is just a duplicate of the mesh. If we wanted to, we could edit this, but that would edit the mesh in its base position, which isn't what we want to do. So we're just going to go ahead and hide it, and then create a new pose. All right, let's create a pose. We'll call it. left arm bent. And this will push, uh, give us a copy of the mesh to the side, you know, much as one would do with a blend shape. Now one thing to note here is we have one mesh under here that can be sculpted using any of Maya's, you know, mesh pulling and sculpting tools. And then we also have a pose base. What we are actually deforming, the de deformation we're actually going to apply to the mesh when that arm is bent, is the difference between the pose base and the pose target. And that lets us very precisely see exactly what we're doing to the mesh. So I'm just going to go in here really quickly and uh, you know model this mesh around a little bit. I'll speed this part up. So here's our sculpted pose. 
and uh, if we switch to x-ray mode we can see precisely how it differs from the original mesh. And if we go take a look at our rig you can see that this is already being applied and as we rotate this back to its original position. Now one thing that's worth noting here is that this is at the moment a little slow. Um, you know, we're still working on optimizing the uh, post space deformer and it's going to be a lot faster in the release version. Um, also, because this is using, unlike many post space deformers, not the rotation of this joint, but the tangent at this point along the curve to drive the post space, we can go ahead and add bone CVs and you can see that the pose will still be applied correctly. As the angle between coming into and out of this joint changes, the pose will become more or less applied. And the same is incidentally true of the constraints that we're seeing here. If I go ahead and rotate this and add a bone CV, you can see that these constraints will continue to behave properly as if they're attached to the curve, which they are.